We will present Red Skelton in just a moment, but first, a short message from our sponsor. Smokers, Raleigh cigarettes give you a tobacco blend that no one has been able to duplicate. It's an exclusive golden rich blend, and it gives Raleigh cigarettes a distinctively outstanding taste and flavor. Raleigh's better blend is a result of painstaking care in every detail. For instance, only the golden tobaccos are good enough for Raleigh's, tobaccos that any authority will tell you are choicer, more expensive. And where two or three kinds of tobaccos might be good enough for some cigarettes, Raleigh's give you a blend of 31 different types of domestic and imported tobaccos, blended together with exacting care by the world's finest tobacco blenders. Yes, America's finest tobacco blend. That's what you get in Raleigh cigarettes. And remember, Raleigh's give you valuable coupons, redeemable for over 70 luxury premiums. Friends, no matter how you look at it, it pays to smoke Raleigh's, the pack with the coupon on the back, the cigarettes with the gold and rich tobacco blend, Raleigh cigarettes. <laughs> modern streamlined version of an old favorite Irving Berlin's Remember. And here is Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's modern streamlined young comedian, the star of our show, Red Skelton. Thank you. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How do you feel tonight, Truman? Oh, swell. Hello, Red. Say, are you fully recovered from that big party you gave the other night? Yeah, wasn't that some party, huh? It sure was. Boy, oh boy. Say, I hope you didn't mind when I spilled that root beer all over the rug. No, I didn't care. I managed to squeeze it all back in the bottle. (laughs) (laughs) We really had fun, didn't we? (laughs) Yeah, you sure did. I know that. But you looked awfully tired when the party broke up, Red. Yeah, I was kind of tired. You know, when I went to bed, I had a terrible time. You did? Yeah, I had to count 563 Earl Carroll girls before I could go to sleep. (laughs) Hiya, Red. Hello, Harriet. How you feel? Oh, just fine. So listen, I want to tell you, I certainly enjoyed your party the other night. Oh, that's good. It was a Halloween party, wasn't it? No. Those were the musicians' girls. (laughs) (laughs) Say, uh, did you see that one girl the drummer was with? Wasn't she bow-legged, huh? Of course, it was her own fault for being so bow-legged. She hitchhiked out here on oil trucks. (laughs) Oh, fine. She was smart, though. Very smart girl. She was? Yeah. Every once in a while, she took her thumb out of her mouth and said something brilliant. <laughs> she seemed kind of old, Red. Has she been in Hollywood long? Yeah, I think she was chased down here by the glacier. <laughs> but anyway, as she arrived at the party, she, she acted very well-bred. Mm-hmm. She arrived well-bred and went home sliced. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, friends. How are all my dear, dear friends tonight? What are you running for? (laughs) Now, Red, you know, I sure had fun at your party. There's nothing like a good old housewarming to bring people closer together. Yeah, I see you've never been in a bargain basement on Dollar Day. (laughs) Listen, Ozzy, about that party the other night, I got a bone to pick with you. You mean we didn't eat everything? (laughs) No, not that. It's about your drummer. I thought he was very ill-mannered at the table. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, I would. The first time I ever saw anybody siphon soup. (laughs) Yeah, that was bad. I don't know what got into my boys at your party. It certainly wasn't food. (laughs) You mean they were still hungry after dinner? Hungry? Why, they cleaned up everything on their plates, and then they got into an argument about whether the trombone player would be better grilled or fried. (laughs) Well, I saw him later, and he was fried. But listen, Ozzy, uh, uh, did you really like my party? Oh, it was just peachy. You like the sandwiches? Just peachy. Uh, And the drinks? Peachy. 
Well, did you like that girl I got for you? Well, she was a little fuzzy, too. <laughs> While walking down the street, I chanced to meet a friend of mine who leads a band. Who doesn't nowadays? Quiet, Harriet. He seemed a bit perplexed. In fact, I'd say completely vexed. And when I tell you what was wrong, you'll understand. I said, my friend, you're looking rather on the worried side. He heaved a heavy sigh and then replied, I'm looking for a guy who plays alto and baritone. And doubles on a clarinet And wears a size 37 suit Of course we'd expect him To do some arranging And perhaps a bit of copying And double oboe and some flute He may sing the vocals Just in case we get stuck Oh yes, and he's the guy Who shines the shoes and drives the truck I'm looking for a guy who plays alto and baritone and doubles on a clarinet and wears a size 37 suit. And here's Harriet to tell her side of the story. Take it away, Harriet. It happened in Gary, Indiana. We were playing a one-night stand. As Ozzy tapped off number three, a gal stepped up and said to me, I'd like a good look at the members of your band. I'm looking for a certain young musician. I met him at a dance a year ago. I don't recall if he was with B.G. or Tommy D., but I'll tell you all about him so you'll know. I'm looking for a guy who plays alto and baritone and doubles on a clarinet and wears a size 37 suit. I can't find him listed in downbeat or metronome, billboard or variety, but oh my goodness, was he cute. I can't remember if his hair was dark or light, Cause he didn't take his hat off when he kissed me goodnight I'm looking for a guy who plays alto and baritone And doubles on a clarinet And wears a size 37 suit That was Ozzy and Harriet looking for a guy who plays alto and baritone, doubles on a clarinet, and wears size 37 suit. Well, the guy that wrote that song deserves a lot of credit, no kidding. I imagine it was very hard riding in a straitjacket. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Harriet, I want to thank you for playing that benefit the other night for all the doctors and nurses with me. Oh, it's all right. I enjoyed it, Red. Yeah. Say, how about us doing a show for all the doctors and nurses all over the country, huh? Say, that's a good idea. We can show different types of patients and the things that we think that happen in hospitals. To start off with, we'll, we'll show you the fellows who take you there. The men who have the most dangerous jobs of all, the ambulance drivers. Hey, now, take it easy going around these curves. Well, if you're scared, just do what I do. Close your eyes. <laughs> Every minute counts, you know. All right, come on, let's go. Push that gas pedal right down to the floor. If press it down any farther, brother. We'll be walking. <laughs> hey, I think I'll turn up this alley and take a shortcut. <laughs> a one-way alley. <laughs> there, that's it. That's it. That's the place right over there. Okay. Come on, hurry. There's no time to lose. Well, what do you want? Make it two hamburgers and hurry. We gotta get right back. <laughs> you know, I was in ambu- I was in an ambulance once that got me to the hospital so fast that my ailment didn't get there till ten minutes later. <laughs> Say, Red, huh? did you ever see one of those doctors who's always busy? I'll tell oh, you yeah. what, you be the doctor and I'll be the nurse, huh? Okay, we'll do that one. 
Oh, good morning there, nurse. Good morning, doctor. What's cooking? The patients. They've all got fever. <laughs> By the way, how's your patient with a broken leg? Uh, he's doing much better today. He was chasing the nurse all around the room. <laughs> he always did that. I know, but today he caught her. <laughs> What are you so mad about? That's better than I ever did. <laughs> Say, how's the other patient, room 607? Pretty bad. He just saw three pink elephants. Oh, that is bad. Yeah, there was four of them. <laughs> Say, anybody waiting to see me? Yep, quite a crowd. You better go out and get in your cage. Okay. <laughs> now, please, nurse, remember, I am Dr. Skelton, DDS, SIS, SIPPI. <laughs> Ah, good morning there, Dr. Jekyll. My, you look pretty happy today. Yes, I'm in a good mood today. On my way over to the hospital, I ate three good humor men. (laughs) Really? Well, how do you feel? Oh, just fine. Ah! (laughs) Uh, By the way, uh, Dr. Skelton, here's that case I was telling you about. Let's see. (gasps) My, this is the strangest case I've ever seen. Yes, it's all head and no body. Yes. What shall we do? You send that beer back the first thing in the morning. (laughs) Now we come to the most tragic case of all, the expectant father. This time you be the nurse, I'll be a big politician waiting for the baby to arrive, a very excited guy. Uh, Good morning, nurse. Has Junior arrived yet? No, Mayor Skelton, it may be some time. Well, I'll give him till 2 o'clock. I got a court order. (laughs) Oh, by the way, congratulations, Mayor. You really stole that last election. That's a lie. I paid for every vote. (laughs) Uh, Here, have a cigarette. Well, expectant fathers usually give out cigars. On this program, are you kidding? (laughs) Aren't you proud to be the father of a new baby? Well, the way I look at it, another 21 years, another vote. (laughs) Here he is, Mayor, your new son. (laughs) A Republican. have a lady and her little boy going to see the doctor. The little boy's one of those mean guys, you know. Harriet, you be my mother, and I'll be the little boy. Okay, Red. Now, Richard, you stay right here in the waiting room. I'll be right back. Where are you going? I'm going in to get Dr. Nelson. Now, you're going to sneak in somewhere and get a beer, and I want to go with you. Right back. Now, you did that last night, and you went to a bingo game, and I want to go. I'll be right back. I wish I was five instead of four. <laughs> then I could make my own living. I wouldn't have to stand for this stuff. Besides that, I'd be one year closer to my old age pension. <laughs> Ooh, a telephone. If I do, I get a whipping. I do it. I'll do it. Maybe for me anyway. Hello, this is Dr. Nelson Dorfit. He's having a sale in operation. Tonsil, $30. Appendix, $50. Liver, $60. On a bun, $62.50. Uh oh. Here he is, Doctor. Well, my little man, what's the matter with you? Now, wait a minute. Let's not get no deeper. <laughs> well, Doctor, I'll tell you. He's been swallowing things again. Yesterday, he swallowed two nickels, and today he swallowed two nickels and a dime. What's he got down there, a turnstile? <laughs> well, after all, that's nothing. Here, uh, let me see. Why, what he has is a case of hives. Yes, hives, that's all he has. I'll give him a little castor oil. You and who else? Here now, take this castor oil. Now, wait a minute. Had it been cut? No. <laughs> well, then put something in it. I can't drink it straight, buddy. <laughs> I won't drink it not you picked it like a cocktail. Well, I'll hold his nose. I don't care. Go ahead. Hold my nose. Go ahead. Stick it so I can't breathe. Go ahead. I dare you. Go on. Butt my eardrums. Go ahead. 
I'll sue you for every nickel you die. Oh, Richard, what can Mother do to get you to drink this? Well, throw in some finny to kill the taste of the cat to oil. Then throw in a strawberry to kill the taste of the finny. Yes, but this is November. We can't have strawberries until next May. Okay, then throw me a magazine. I'll wait. <laughs> Then we have the young doctor who's just out of school. Uh, this time I'll be the doctor, and wonderful Smith, you be my patient. Uh, good doctor, morning. I'd like a checkup. All right, say, let's see your tongue. Uh, no, stick it out farther. Uh, no, farther. It's hooked on back there. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Lay it on the floor? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, that's very bad. Do I have a coat on my tongue? Yes, with a belt in the back. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's uh, just nothing I can do for you. You mean I'm headed for the last roundup? Yes. Then maybe I'd better start making my reservations. Could I use your phone? Pay phone, right over there. Hello, operator? I'd like to call Uncle Tom up in heaven. What's you say? Deposit another quarter? But operator, the Chamber of Commerce told me heaven was inside the Los Angeles city limits. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Tom. This is wonderful. Yeah, wonderful Smith. What's that? No, I don't feel so very good. By the way, did Grandpa make it okay? <laughs> yes, it was kind of sudden. He trumped Grandma's age. <laughs> uh, you say you got to hang up. Oh, you got to polish the golden stars and a few hundred stars. How come you got to do so much work? Oh, short of help up there. <laughs> hey, ask him if my brother made it. He's a big politician. Oh, hello. Hello, Uncle Tom. Did a politician by the name of Skelton make it? Oh, you haven't had a politician up there for the past 30 years. <laughs> but listen, Uncle Tom, I called to see if you would make a reservation. Yeah, I would like a room with a halo and a good view of the earth. Yeah, but tell me, are the girls pretty up there? Oh, if you think about women, you'll lose your wings. You mean you can't even think about sweet Georgia Brown? Yes, Uncle Tom, you're right. She was pretty. Yeah, you sure had some fun with that gal. Hello? Hello? Uncle Tom? Oh, my goodness. Uncle Tom has been grounded. <laughs> Man, come do that beat do tap. Trumpet man, you make my feet do tap. Give three cheers for the man with a horn. He might be tired, but he's not forlorn. Tempo bred and rhythm born. Beat it out, beat it out, beat it out, yeah. When his horn gets round to his lips, his educated fingertips makes you wanna shake your hips. Beat it out, beat it out, beat it out, yeah. He'll mix hot licks. He's full of tricks. He really clicks. Trumpet man is a bit of okay when your cares are blown away. The man with the horn is the devil to pay. Beat it out, beat it out, beat it out, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, a special bulletin from the NBC Newsroom. Mayor LaGuardia is leading O'Dwyer by 25,000 votes, with three-fourths of the precincts heard from. LaGuardia has 781,000, O'Dwyer 751,000. The New York Times and the New York News both say LaGuardia is the winner. He really Trumpet man is a bit of okay when your cares are blown away. The man with the horn is the devil to pay. Feed it out, feed it out, feed it out, yeah.
trumpet man is the devil to pay. Beat it out, beat it out, beat it out, yeah. That was Beat It Out, which Ozzy and Harriet introduced in the new Columbia picture, Sweethearts on the Campus, uh, campus. and it's a very good picture, too. <laughs> Say, Truman, I got a swell idea for the introduction for the commercial tonight. Well, you know me, Red, commercial-minded me, let's have it. Yeah, all right. Well, now, look, I come up and I say, Truman, why do they call Raleigh's the oomph cigarette, see? And you say, I don't know, then I give you a snapper. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, something tells me I shouldn't do this, but go ahead. All right. <clears throat> say, uh, Truman... Do you know why they call Raleigh's the oomph cigarette? No, Red. Why are Raleigh's called the oomph cigarettes? Because they give you such beautiful premium. <laughs> well, friends, regardless of whether you call them premium oomphs or premiums, they're really magnificent. And there are over 70 Raleigh premiums, each one the finest of its kind. All nationally advertised merchandise. You'll find a lot of things you've probably been wanting for a long, long time. And you can get all of them. Just smoke Raleigh cigarettes and save those valuable golden coupons that come on the back of each pack. Now, we have a 60-page catalog picturing in full color every Raleigh premium. It's free. For your copy, just drop a card to Raleigh in care of the station to which you were listening. And friends, tonight, try Raleigh cigarettes. Raleigh's exclusive gold-enriched tobacco blend makes them better cigarettes with a smoother, milder taste and flavor. Yes, with your very first pack, you'll find it pays to smoke Raleigh's. The pack with the coupon on the back. Say, that's nice plugging there, Truman. Thank you, Red. Red, yes. you seem to know all about medical matters. Can yeah. you tell me about the strangest case you ever heard of? Well, I can't tell you about it, but I can show it to you. All right, go ahead. All right, you be the nurse, I'll be the strange case. <laughs> Come in. My goodness, what have you got on your feet? Slot machine? Nope, it's not that. <laughs> I've come to see the doctor about them sounds. <laughs> He's got to help me, Mitt. I got too much iron in my blood. <laughs> I noticed you had a high polish. Yeah. Well, sit down. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got to get oiled again tonight. <laughs> My, that is a strange ailment. Yeah. Does it run in the family? Yeah, my grandfather was a railroad magnet. <laughs> and my grandmother had a tin ear. Oh, I'll bet it gets you in a lot of trouble. Yes, it's very embarrassing, too, you know. Yesterday, a guy slapped me on the back, and a man four blocks away yelled, Run for your life, it's another earthquake. <laughs> Have you ever been examined before? Yes, I was examined by my draft board. How did you make out? Well, they gave me a little white card. And then I went to each doctor and he punched a hole in whatever ailment I was tested for. Well, that's an efficient way to do it. Yeah, and when I was through, I took my little card home, put it on my player piano, and it played, I'll be glad when you're dead, you rascal. <laughs> Sounds pretty serious. Yes. We'd better get in and see the doctor right away. Follow me, please. Yes, yes. <laughs> sound like I got dish pan hands, don't I? Step right in, please. Whoa. This is the doctor. How do you do, Doc? How do you do? Say, you are in need of medical attention. You're so pale and wrinkled. You're looking at a Venetian blind. This is me. <laughs> Well, my little man, what seems to be the trouble? I got too much iron in my blood, Doc. Well, take off your shirt and I'll look at you. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Oop, there went another rivet. <laughs> uh, nurse, while I examine the patient, you prepare the x-ray machine. Yes, Doctor. Now I listen with the stethoscope. Okay, Doc. <laughs> yes, my boy, you do have iron in your blood and laconga. <laughs> Doctor, the x-ray is ready Yes, I'll be through in a moment uh, I just want to test his reflexes Oh, <laughs> oh Doc, can you do that again? It tickles <laughs> Well, I don't know, that's pretty bad 
bad. Water on the knee and iron in the blood. Yes, sir, boy. With a combination like that, when I die, I'll be a real red skeleton. <laughs> now, young man, uh, you step in front of this x-ray machine. Okay, Up here, Doc. That's All it. Right. Now, look straight ahead. Okay, Doc. <laughs> what do you see, Doctor? Why, I see a lot of little men on their knees, and they look like they're praying. Oh, you've got the machine on too strong. What you're looking at is a crap game in the basement. <laughs> you don't know much about medicine, do you, Doc? Uh, <laughs> just a moment, you. I'll have you know I studied four years with Dr. Neo, Ph.D. Oh, yeah? Well, I studied two years with Dr. Kildare, MGM. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, Doc, you've got to help me, Doc. Uh, how long have you had this condition? Ten years. But you've got to help me, Doc. You've got to help me, Doc. I sound like a daytime cereal program. You've got to help me, Doc. Uh, you say that you've had this condition for ten years? Yes. Then why the sudden hurry to get rid of it? Well, I just got word that because of the shortage in building material, the government's going to melt me down. You did all right when you introduced my commercial a moment ago. Oh, why, thanks, Brad. There's no reason why I shouldn't help out a pal, is there? None that I know of, Brad. And that's the reason I want to introduce a pal of mine who speaks for our companion sponsor. You know, gentlemen, there are mighty good reasons why Sir Walter Raleigh Pipe Tobacco is the favorite with men everywhere who know and appreciate quality smoking. Sir Walter Raleigh gives you everything you could wish for in the perfect pipe tobacco. It has a rich flavor a pleasing, tangy taste and a fragrant aroma. And it burns extra cool, even and slow. If you paid $100 a pound for a special pipe mixture, you couldn't get finer quality tobacco than Sir Walter Raleigh. It's the quality pipe tobacco of America. And here's the best part of it. With all this high quality, still Sir Walter Raleigh costs no more than ordinary smoking tobaccos. Try Sir Walter Raleigh tonight. This is Truman Bradley again. Remember, we'll all be back again at the same time next week. Red Skelton, Ozzy Nelson and his music, Harriet Hilliard and Wonderful Smith. And now, here's Red Skelton with a final word before we say goodnight. Thank you, Truman. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know that the government of the United States expects each of us to do his power, part toward national defense. And in my humble opinion, the best way for us all to do our share is by buying United States defense bonds and saving stamps. Thank you very much for listening, and goodbye now. Red Skelton appears on this program through the courtesy of Metro-Golden-Mayer. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.